Good morning, everybody, and welcome to News Now on Fox 10 Extra. It's Friday, Friday, however you want to refer to it. Lots of people could already be getting out of Dodge, heading up north for the weekend, maybe Sedona, Flagstaff perhaps, Prescott, Payson. Ron Hoon and I taking a live look at the I-17 at Dove Valley, where so far it looks pretty good. That is the getting out of Dodge shot yep. right there, Pilar. <laughs> Uh, and you know, I mean, I hate to bring it up, but we are, we don't see a hundred in the October forecast, but we are tossing around some 97, 98, and 99. Yeah, so, we're getting pretty close. Uh, by this time of the year, you really want things to be cooling off. So yeah, one more weekend up in the mountains probably sounds like a great idea. Yeah, absolutely. Before it gets too cold, because it does get cold. So many yes. people are like, Arizona doesn't get cold. We've got ski and mm -hmm. snow resorts and yep. people snowboard. And sure, and we got plants every couple, three years. We get a, we get a, a cold that's yep. enough here, even in the desert, to kill off the plants. So you got to be ready for anything. Absolutely. All right, Ron, instead of calling it top stories today, I'm calling it Friday Talkers. Okay. First and foremost. Foremost, impeachment. What's the latest? Well, President Trump went out this morning onto the South Lawn of the White House. Now, keep in mind what he's done over the last two days. He went onto the uh, Lawn of the White House yesterday and said, I now call upon another nation, China, to investigate uh, Joe Biden and his son, Hunter Biden. Uh, and I was chatting with Chris Wallace the anchor of Fox News Sunday uh, from our Fox DC Bureau. And he said that he felt what the president was trying to do in that effort was as much about trying to normalize his behavior in asking other nations to investigate. The president says doesn't have anything to do with politics. Uh, it has to do with rooting out corruption. Mm -hmm. Well, you can, you know, whatever your political viewpoint on that is, uh, but by basically going out in front of everybody, the national media, and saying, I now call on another nation to do it, it almost feels like he's trying to undercut the effort to investigate him up on Capitol Hill as to whether or not he actually did something like this. Yeah. Uh, you know, so uh, all of that happened yesterday. It created plenty of headlines. And then this morning he went out and said, I, I, I basically, I dare Nancy Pelosi to impeach me right now. I'm going to send her a letter saying, have that vote on the House floor before the White House even sends any documents. Let's see what you got. So, um, you know, so interesting, Pilar. I, I think about how we've had other presidents uh, you know, who've been investigated or looked at over the years. One president might have taken the approach of trying to just cover everything up. Right. This is the opposite of that. This, <laughs> this is, is like, instead just going out on the lawn of the White House and doing it again. <laughs> so where it all goes from here, we shall see. Uh, but it sure has been fascinating over the last 48 hours. Yeah, President Trump saying we've been treated very unfairly. When I speak to foreign leaders, I speak in an appropriate way. Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy accusing the House Speaker of running a quote-unquote sham process by refusing to hold a vote authorizing an impeachment inquiry. Nancy Pelosi refusing, saying there is no constitutional requirement nor precedent. But we've been following it all here on News Now, and we're going to continue. Just like this story, Ron, uh, okay. update on the Botham John Amber Geiger case. Yeah, this is video of the judge handing Geiger after her sentencing a Bible. Turns okay. out an atheist organization filing a complaint saying the judge who presided over the trial crossed the line. That is Judge Tammy Kemp. She gave a Bible to Geiger shortly after she was sentenced to 10 years in prison for murdering her neighbor, Botham John. The Freedom From Religion Foundation filed a complaint with the Texas State Commission yesterday saying the judge's actions were inappropriate. The foundation says government employees, quote, may not use the power and privilege of their offices to preach their personal religious beliefs. They say it, it was an abuse of power and that it was outside the bounds of propriety and the law. This, Ron, as we are just learning, that Amber Geiger has been turned over to the Texas Department of Criminal Justice to begin mm -hmm. her prison sentence. But I do want to mention, there was some emotional video out of the courtroom the other day during oh, the sentencing. Yeah, yeah, it was John's brother. Right. And we've already we've had it up on our YouTube since it broke since it happened but I do have it it's about like a four minute clip and I would like to play it for those this Friday who have not heard it just yet because again this was very emotional a lot of people could not believe that this man did this and he says he went against his family to do so so I'm gonna play it really quickly I don't want to 
say twice or for the hundredth time what you've or how much you've taken from us. I think you know that. But I just I hope you go to God with all what all the guilt all the thing the bad things you may have done in the past each and every one of us may have done something that we're not supposed to do if you truly are sorry i know i can speak for myself i i forgive you and i know if you go to god and ask him he will forgive you And I don't think anyone could say it. Again, I'm speaking for myself, not even bad for my family. But I love you just like anyone else. And I'm not gonna say I hope you rot and die just like my brother did, but I see I I personally want the best for you. And I, I wasn't gonna ever say this in front of my family or anyone, but I don't even want you to go to jail. I want the best for you. Because I know that's what that's exactly what both of them would want you to do. And the best would be give your life to Christ. I'm not gonna say anything else. I think giving your life to Christ would be the best thing that both of them would want you to do. Again, I love you as a person. And I don't wish anything bad on you. I don't know if this is possible, but can can I give her a hug, please? Please. Yes. Oh, people were saying that that was a true example of forgiveness there. That embrace seen worldwide, not just here in the U.S. Um, and very emotional. And the hug lasted uh, for about a minute. And sure, anytime anything happens, whether it's in a court of law or any other high profile uh, venue that is just so different from what we're used to seeing, people are going to talk about it in a positive and a negative way. Um, the bottom line is that she is now headed off to prison to serve 10 years. <laughs> Uh, there are people who are upset, who still feel as though she should have uh, received a heavier sentence than that. And it is interesting, Pilar, keep this in mind. I mean, there's been a lot of pushback in the last, I don't know, five years or so about mandatory sentencing. Do you realize that that judge had so much leeway in that case that she could have given her anywhere from five years, which yeah. she gave her double that of 10, up to 99 years? So it really kind of ran the gamut, and that's what a lot of people have been uh, kind of pushing back on. Like, let's put more discretion in the hands of judges so they can decide on a case-by-case -case basis and not just say, okay, it's a drug-related offense, you got 10 years, right. or whatever. So that's the way they do it, at least in that part of Texas. And uh, a lot of people felt like Amber Geiger, um, because she'll be eligible for parole in five years, Got off, uh, got off too easy. And that's been some of the protests that we've been seeing since then. But on the other hand, you've got the family itself, at least the brother, saying this is how we think that he, that our brother would have wanted this to be handled. Yeah. So. And Ron, just moments ago, the family wrapped up a news conference with other activists calling for policing changes. I'll have that later. Okay. Here on the show. All right. Um, okay, so uh, believe it or not, it's almost been seven years since the Sandy Hook school shooting. Mm. 
when all those children were taken from their right. parents, from their families. Right. And, um, you know, I, I always say, the, I always use the phrase, the power and magic of News Now. Okay. Um, you know, we can show things in its entirety. We run the whole show here from the News Now desk yep. set, whatever right. you'd like to call sure. it. Right. And uh, I call our viewers News Nowers. And on the stream, on YouTube, I'm always kind of much more candid, kind of give like a behind the scenes look as to how things were done. Okay. Uh, earlier this week, I got a Skype interview with the co founder of Sandy Hook Promise. It's a nonprofit. Okay. And uh, they have a public service announcement that's kind of making its rounds on TV right now. And okay. it's people have not only paid attention to it, they have been talking about it, they have been sharing it, they have, as a result, been going to the nonprofit's website. Mm, okay. And I didn't know until mid-interview with the co-founder that he lost his seven-year-old son. I spoke mm. with Mark Barden. Okay. He lost his seven-year-old boy, Daniel, mm -hmm. in Sandy Hook. And so what was the gist of what he had to say, if you were going to just kind of put it into a nutshell, Pilar, in terms of some of the things that you and, and he talked about, it would be? So I'm going to show this public service announcement, but I said, I said, why do you think this one's garnering so much attention? Why do you think? And he says, it's so relatable and it's so attention grabbing. And the reason we're kind of talking about it now is because unfortunately yesterday mm -hmm. during the show, I went to go play that Skype interview yes. and it was it was gone oh, from okay. our system. Disappeared in the system. Happens. It does. does happen and that's what I'm saying. You've got the good, yeah. the bad, the ugly, and it's okay because sometimes things don't go as planned. It's live TV, right? Yeah, exactly. But I would like to show this PSA to everybody now. Again, this is courtesy of Sandy Hook Promise. And uh, we can just chit chat about it afterwards. Hear what you okay. think. Perfect bag for back to school. These colorful binders help me stay organized. These headphones are just what I need for studying. These new sneakers are just what I need for the new year. This jacket is a real must have. My parents got me the skateboard I wanted. It's pretty cool. These scissors really come in handy in art class. These colored pencils, too. These new socks, they can be a real lifesaver. <laughs> I finally got my own phone to stay in touch with my mom. Again, that public service announcement courtesy of Sandy Hook Promise. And uh, they say, hey, you can go to their website and get some more information. So uh, it starts out kind of kind of happy, kind of back to school time, right? Sure. I've got these supplies. I'm ready to go. And then it takes a turn. Yeah. Well, um, it is clearly when you think what had, what had to be for those students, the unbelievable moments of watching, I mean, they're so innocent, they're so young, they're, they're little first graders. They're yeah. six and seven years old. Speaking of, I have some pictures of Daniel Barden. That's him and with his dad. that's his little seven-year-old, uh, okay, so there's dad. What they had to go through is so horrific. It's, it is truly one of the darkest days in American history. Uh, and the school was torn down. And the parents have done what they can ever since, a lot of them to take steps in various ways to try to prevent future mass shootings in schools. And um, the threat, obviously, you know, it is interesting that a lot of schools, there has not been much done in terms of tightening any kind of gun regulations. Right. Uh, but the schools themselves, in large measure, have taken a lot of uh, steps to try to basically dramatically tighten security in the in the classroom and in the school house itself. I mean, you see more schools that are now being built without the open areas where you can just walk across the lawn and into a, a whole row of classrooms, for example. Everything you've got, uh, fencing has gone up. I've, I've seen more recently the newer buildings that are being built here, for example, in the Phoenix metro area that are almost like a courtyard design mm -hmm. where somebody who should not be in that school is just not going to get into that school unless they go through uh, all the proper uh, procedures and the main entrance at the school. So they're doing what they can. But um, you've, got a lot of, you've got a lot of parents here who are never going to give up this fight, and you surely can't blame them. Because right. when you think what this horrible 
despicable human being did at that school to those innocent little uh, six and seven year olds it just it breaks your heart all these years later to still think about it yeah and uh, Ron Mark said they're making a difference here's the website right here sandyhookpromise.org people are getting the message they want to become involved and they want to continue to hear these stories and he certainly feels compelled to continue to do work mm -hmm. and make progress and um, so that's that's what they're doing that was kind okay. of the recap yeah. so thanks for joining me today yep. for Friday talkers and yes. uh, see you again Monday there's more news now just moments away everyone